So when we were uh, searching, when we were doing this practice of using these two search engines, uh, there's a couple of things to come back to. Um, one of them is, okay, well, uh, Google is the only one that matters. No, you want uh, Google and Bing. So uh, think about it like this. Uh, yes, Google is so uh, famous, it's become a verb, it's almost genericized, you Google it. Uh, but it all comes back from being a search engine that got the popularity. We talked about how Yahoo was the popular dominant search engine in the 90s. Uh, if, you, if you didn't see this, there was a TV show uh, on AMC um, called Halt and Catch Fire. Didn't anyone watch that series? It just ended. But it was a really good series, three seasons long, I think maybe four, about the rise of personal computers starting in 1983. So it's a drama. Uh, it's about the rise of personal computers and this triangle of people and their, and their dramas. Towards the end, on the last season, it takes place in the early 90s. So it was a great look at the early web, the early web browsers, and uh, getting on the internet and search engines and such. So it's dramatized and all of that, but I found it interesting because I lived through those times, the 80s and the 90s computer stuff, and it was cool, it was interesting to see that. And Yahoo uh, was sort of like the unofficial villain of that final season because they were the big, powerful search engine that no one could battle. Now, 20 years later, 25 years later, Yahoo's not that big of a relevant player. Google is the one that's the biggest one, yes. But the reason we also cover Bing is, uh, let's, let's write something down here. Okay, Google search, Bing search. Okay, there is a company that owns Google search. What company is that? Alphabet. Uh, previously known as Google. So Google now, the main Google company, <coughs> thank you, the, the Google company, it started off as, you know, Google Incorporated, whatever its official name is. The Google company changed their name a few years ago to Alphabet. That's what it is officially behind the scenes. They're known as Alphabet. So Alphabet owns Google search, which is google.com. Now, most people, only if you're really in the know, you know that the parent company is Alphabet. So I'll still call it the Google company, the Google parent company. They own Google Search. What else does the Google company own? What's that? Google Plus. Google Plus, yep. That's the um, social network. Anything else? YouTube. YouTube, yes. Anything else? A little thing called uh, Gmail, Google Mail. They own ways now, yeah. Uh, maps, uh, so uh, navigation app, and uh, of course Google Maps, etc., etc., etc. They own a lot of things. They have a lot of properties. They also, if you have one of these Google Android phones, not exactly the phone, the operating system. Short answer: Google Android. So the Google company, Alphabet, they have their hand in a lot of pies. Uh, they have control over all of these interests. So uh, they have a lot of uh, have, a, have a lot of reach. Now, um, Bing search. Uh, do you know or did you figure out who owns Bing? Microsoft. Okay. Well, what is what else does Microsoft own, or, or what do they have? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Social network. They have their own email systems, Hotmail, Outlook, etc. Maps or navigation, Bing Maps. And then they have also operating systems. Uh, yes, operating systems, Windows, Office, servers. Uh, Google has that too, servers. So uh, very, very similar. Both uh, companies have a lot of the same sorts of holdings. 
Um, they don't exactly, to my knowledge, maybe I don't, can't think of it at the moment, but they don't exactly, well, sort of the closest thing that they have YouTube-wise, sort of, is Mixer.com, but it's a little bit more focused on video games. So, very similar holdings, maps, mail, search, everything. Yes? Vimeo, I think, is independent at the moment. They rely on uh, customer subscriptions uh, to pay the bills. I don't doubt that they would get purchased at some point, or maybe they already are. I I'm not quite sure, but I think they're independent. So, um, okay, Google uh, is so big, so famous, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a verb. And uh, when you get, for example, oh, I forgot to say also here, Alphabet or Google has Google Chrome web browser. What's the web browser from Microsoft? Edge, old version, Internet Explorer. So we have Internet Explorer right there, but we've got a Windows 7 computer in the newer computers, Windows 8 and 10 and, and higher. Edge is the latest browser. So they've got their own web browser. They've got their own, their own software, their own app to go look at websites. So both companies have their own. Um, <clears throat> and so when I get, when I download, uh, when I get a brand new computer and I download Chrome to start using it, I automatically get Google search built into it. I just search. It searches Google. I get results. If I don't go off and get a different web browser, I have by default Edge or Internet Explorer. And guess what search engine it uses? Bing, because it's a Microsoft property. So when you get a brand new computer and you don't get a different browser, it automatically has you searching on Bing. You may have never noticed that. You may have. You may not care. You may change it. Everyone is different. But the default is on Windows computers, we, we get that. And Windows computers have the highest market share. Macs are very famous, but their market share is definitely less than 10%. 10% of the people of the world use a Mac, even though you and all of your family uses a Mac. In the world, less than 10%. It's more like 5% or so in the world. So that means, yes, like 90% of the world's computers, personal computers, are using some version of Windows. Now on servers, that's Linux, and that's another issue. But on personal computers throughout the world, the largest percentage, even if we're being conservative and say 80% of the world's computers use Windows, personal computers. The ones you go off and buy at uh, you know, uh, Best Buy or Walmart or wherever, Costco, it's usually a Windows computer. So Windows computer comes from Microsoft. It's got built-in Microsoft things, so you're doing Bing search. So even though um, I said Google is the famous one, the bigger one, Bing still has a foothold. Now, uh, my friend a few years ago, she bought uh, a Prius. And it has a cool little panel where you can uh, see maps and stuff. And on that, on that little panel, you can search for gas stations and restaurants and such. And I noticed in the corner, it said powered by Bing. So her car has a Bing search built in. Your Windows computer has search Bing search built in. When iPhones came out, they had a partnership with Google that when you searched on the iPhone or when you asked Siri, you would get Google results. Well, after about five years or so, the partnership between Apple and Google ended. And guess what? They started to incorporate and do contracts with other search engines, Bing and Yahoo. So now when you get an iPhone, it may not be set to um, Google search, and you get a Mac, and it may not be set to Google search. So uh, again, Bing is relevant because uh, it's uh, found in so many, so many places that you may or may not know or care about. And you may think yourself pretty computer savvy, and as soon as you get a new computer, you install Chrome, and you've got Google search. But other people don't think of the uh, the people in your circles that don't know how to use a computer, they just sit down and use it, and I don't know what Bing is, I don't know what Google is, I'm on Firefox. You know, that sort of thing. It's, um, uh, there's a big population of people that don't know this. So, for our benefit is that we need to uh, know about both search engines and optimize for both. So yes? 
Firefox it does not apply. None of these browsers apply to what I'm talking about. The purpose of these software is to go to the internet. That's not a web browser. Uh, that's not a search engine. That's not a search engine. These are not search engines. They're just web browsers to browse the web. They're software to go on the internet. And I can use Firefox to go to Google or DuckDuckGo or Bing or Yahoo. It's just your, it's the car that you drive on the information superhighway. It's, uh, you know, you drive any car on any freeway in the real world. Uh, on the internet, you know, the, the internet is the freeway, and these browsers are the car. Well, um, I don't know about advantage, perhaps possible detriment or collusion in terms of this company's browser is using this company's search engine. I have to be cynical and think, there might be results that appear differently than if I'm on the competitor's web browser and visit the competitor's search engine. And vice versa. I may use Google Chrome and go off to Bing and I may get different results. Worse results? I don't know. All of the search engines claim they're neutral and what you get on the search engine is the best results. I unfortunately don't doubt that there is some bias when you use a certain company's browser on a certain company's site. So we'll be covering setting up webmaster tools on both. Therefore, we should set up webmaster tools on both search engines. Creating a free account to submit our content to the search engines to check the health of our websites uh, to optimize search results. They're free. We're going to do it next week. We're basically going to connect your website with both of those search engines. If you don't have a website, again, that's OK. You can still come, follow the lecture, take notes, apply this once you've got a website. But we're going to connect your website to the search engines so that the search engines know you exist, so that you optimize yourself to appear in the best way, so you can read the tips and techniques and the do's and don'ts. And all of that is for free. So then that's why we should do it for both. It's a little bit of extra effort to optimize for both search engines, but it's definitely beneficial. OK, so um, when we did our searching here, we got different results. And I searched for the generic term web design, and my company didn't appear. Let me ask you this. Raise your hand. How many of you would like to know the easy way then to appear a lot better on the search results? Raise your hand. Okay, great. Take your hand, reach into your wallet, take out your credit card. <laughs> and then we pay the search engines to rank higher. That's the easy way, that's the fast way to rank higher on search results. Each search engine will gladly take your money to rank you higher on results. Now, in a very, very basic condensation of it, very basic way to explain this without getting into the details too much. Basically, the more you pay, uh, the higher you are on the results. So let's say just randomly picking numbers. I'm going to pay $10, I don't know, a day, a month, whatever. I'm just picking a number. I'm going to pay $10 to be number one. So I'm number one on Bing, I'm number one on Google. If you notice here, both Wix.com is number one on both, both sites. So let's say I pay $10 to be number one. Uh, then my competitor pays $15. And now they're number one, and I'm number two. OK, no problem. I'll pay $20. I'm back to number one. Then the competitor pays $100, and they're number one. So now I have to pay 101 or 120 or whatever. Short answer there. That's basically then that arms race of pay per click. That's this is that whole concept of uh, paying here. That's the that's the term pay per click. 
uh, pay to get results on search engines. You're paying per click that people pay to go to your um, to go to your website. Short answer. There's nuances, of course, but the short answer is that I have to pay some amount. My competitor can pay more. Now I have to pay more. Then they pay more, and it's a constant thing. In this class, we won't focus on pay-per-click, PPC. We'll focus on organic search results. Organic opposite of PPC. Pay-per-click is you're, you're, you're going to be paying to try to get top results. And it does work. If it didn't work, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have the system. It does work because you may see Wix as number one and see it as an ad and ignore it. And you may believe, I will never click on an ad. Those are fake. They just paid for it. Great. A lot of people are like that. But a lot of people are also like, I don't know what an ad is. I don't know what it means AD right there. I don't know that this isn't really the best result. I don't know that they're paying for placement. Or a lot of people are also, I don't care that they paid. I just want a top result. I need an answer. So all of these results for some people, yeah, Wix. I'm going to go there and make a website. I need a website. They've got great reviews, perhaps, so I'm going to click. We'll focus on organic search results. The fast, easy way to get results. The long-term way to get results. Via the concepts we'll talk about in this class, I cannot guarantee how long it'll take for you to this stuff for this stuff to kick in for you to get to number one or number two or whatever. If I were being hired um, by a company, we would not give them any sort of guarantee. We cannot give them any sort of guarantee that says, OK, within a month, you're going to be on the top and you're going to be making double your sales. We cannot say within three months, within a year. We cannot give any sort of guarantee. Uh, because again, the search engines. Uh, they change their algorithm and techniques that may have worked this month might not work next quarter. And for various other reasons, it may be very hard to crack that top 10 results. Obviously, the most cynical is to say, well, I'm never going to be number one because I'm never going to pay. No, it, it does happen. You can get top results without paying. It just takes more effort and more time, and there's no guarantee. So there may be many reasons why you don't get top results. And these are things we'll go on in detail throughout the class. But how old is your website? How much competition do you have? Is your content good? Are you also engaging in SEM? And these questions here we'll discuss in detail. But things such as, yes, my website, which I just created last week, why aren't I number one yet? I followed everything I learned in the class, and I'm still not number one. Age of your website is one of the many factors that helps your ranking. So if you and your competitor have websites that are very, very similar, but yours is one month or one year older, that is a little bit of a head start that you have that will help you rank better. Um, competition. Uh, I'm a lawyer in San Diego. Well, you and 10,000 others. So uh, how am I going to stand out from the rest? OK, well, actually, I am a uh, pet sitting company that only gives you know organic uh, treats you and a hundred others so there's always going to be competition in any of any of these jobs or any of these spaces that you're in maybe not the exact 
thing, but something close enough. I'm a pet sitter. I don't use organic pet treats, but I'm still higher than you, and I get more customers than you. Well, what kind of competition are you up against to get to these top results? This one's going to be answered deeper as we go through the course about what good content is. And then also SEM. What are you doing outside of your website? Maybe you've developed your keyword strategy, which will, uh, which will is very important and we'll, we'll get to. But are you also on Twitter? Are you also writing blogs? Are you also on Facebook? What are you doing outside of your website? Remember, SEO is what you do on your website, and SEM is what you do outside of your website. So I'm not saying do all of these and you'll be number one. You may engage only on one of them and you may get to number one. You may have so much competition that you do all of what we'll talk about and you're still not number one. And the only way to get to number one is to pay. But then, you know, if you have that idea or that stigma of ads are always bad, then you may never do it. And I'm going to tell you, ads are not bad. This pay-per-click stuff is not bad. It's not cheating or a trick or anything like that if it helps your business. Because ultimately, I have Victor's Bakery. Uh, I want to sell cupcakes. I don't want to go bankrupt. So I will engage in some amount of pay-per-click. It's not tricking or fooling people. It's another just part of the business, a business tactic. Is it, is it cheating that I put seven billboards out on the street and my competitor only has two? Is it cheating that I've got someone on each corner on the block flipping those signs and my competitor has none? No, it's not. All of that is marketing and necessary for a business because word of mouth only goes so far. And if you never get that word of mouth, you, you never go far. So in the real world, marketing and all of that is important, which of course it can be abused, but we'll stay positive. And same things with uh, digital. The more you do, the more it helps you and visibility. And there, there's the paid and the non-paid aspects, and they're both valid. Yes. Do you think the search engines penalize you if you pay per click to get notoriety and then stop, or is it just an actual drop off because somebody else is paying for the space? Uh, there is some of that, depending how you do it. It's fine to try to get things off the ground by by doing pay-per-click in the beginning and giving it a shot for a few weeks or months and then stopping. That's fine. They can be easily abused by creating many of these campaigns and pumping a lot of money into it and switching from topic to topic and just kind of trying to game the system and they will see that. But if we're doing it legitimately in the ways we'll talk about the class, then it should not be detrimental. All of this relates to two topic or two keywords we'll talk about. White hat SEO, black hat SEO. The correct modern techniques of SEO. Black hat SEO. The incorrect outdated techniques of SEO. Uh, we're, of course, in this class going to cover white hat SEO because we want to do things legitimately, correctly, following the rules of the search engines. Black hat SEO is related to things such as buying Twitter followers uh, or uh, buying an email list to, um, to spam people. Uh, or, putting, or putting invisible text on our home page and all of these bad techniques that try to trick the search engines. Uh, these techniques are bad, they're incorrect, they're outdated, they will get you penalized. And like I said earlier, guilty until proven innocent. If the search engines see that you're doing black hat techniques, they'll say you're a spammer, now you're on page 500. And it's going to be very hard to get out of that. White hat is what we'll be talking about in the class about reading the documentation, doing it the right way, following the rules, paying properly or engaging in the free stuff, and knowing that it'll take three months, six months, or whatever to get results, which is following the rules. Yeah. Even when people mentioned that Google has webmaster guidelines, mm -hmm. does Bing have that as well? Yeah. They both have it, and we'll be able to access them both for free. 
Now, the term of the white hat and the black hat, this comes from the old cowboy movies. Uh, so when, the, uh, so when the, um, uh, the bad guys came into town and shot up the place and took over, the sheriff is coming to clean up the town. What, what kind of hat were, were they wearing? The white hat. They were, they were the good guys. The bad guys came in, shot up the town, took over the saloon. They were wearing black hats. So uh, that's where that comes from. Now, because it's digital, there's also what's in the middle. Gray hat. And it's in the middle. It's techniques that perhaps are falling out of favor. The, the search engines, they put out these guidelines and they say, okay, we're going to change this, so don't do this anymore. And they give us a grace period, three months, three weeks, whatever. They give us a grace period to upgrade to the new techniques. In the grace period, well, okay, you should start fixing your stuff. Eventually, it's not going to work. Then when the, once the grace period, period passes, and depending how aggressive they are about it, well, those techniques that you haven't upgraded to, now they're black hat because they're now we're saying don't do this anymore. And um, there are techniques, again, that the search engines haven't figured out that they're bad yet. Maybe as you're reading blogs on these topics, they're saying this seems to be a good technique nowadays to get found if you are a, um, a school. But the search engines haven't fully categorized if that's negative or positive yet. It's sort of in the middle. So we can say pass a techniques that may, that will probably become black hat soon. Again, we're going to focus on white hat, doing it the right way. So we'll be able to get these techniques straight from the horse's mouth, straight from the search engines. But these search engines still don't reveal everything. Because if Google published every single bit of their algorithm of how they work, then the other search engines will suddenly get inspiration that that's how they'll do it too. If Bing put out their full documentation about how to get the best results, then Google or Yahoo might borrow those ideas. Or worse, the spammers will know what's the best way to rank, and then they will abuse it. So keeping up to date with the search engines is a constant thing. You need to read their, their news and follow their trends and read industry blogs. When we set up the search engines next week, that'll be webmaster tools. And for the moment, we'll also look at this, searchengineland.com. This is not from the search engines. This is not affiliated with them. This is a third-party industry blog that writes about these topics. Um, we'll look at this website now. Go ahead and go to your web browser and let's look at that site. That's a great uh, site that you should be reading on a regular basis. You, obviously, you don't need to read it every day, but uh, they have great articles every day about topics regarding search engines, how to optimize yourself, tips and techniques, what's the latest uh, concepts. These are not officially coming from the search engines, so there could be the, there could be the, um, what could happen is that these techniques then actually fall out of favor. These, this site, you know, alerts you to what's black hat and that sort of thing. So let's look at this for a moment. Searchengineland.com. You can go to your web browser and we'll check out the site. Report. Shopping ads are eating text ads. They accounted for 60% of clicks on Google and 33% on Bing quarter one. 
what that's saying is when we did a search over here, remember when I searched for PMD Interactive and on Bing I got results right over here of shopping. It's saying that the shopping related results are doing very well compared to text ads. So if I pay the search engines, I have the option to create ads that are text based versus ad based. And from this latest report, it seems that these ad ones are doing very well. So if I fully read the report to understand that completely, I may come away saying, well, I need to, if I'm going to engage in PPC, I may think about pay, creating ads about my actual products. Now this, of course, has nothing to do with what our business is about. But if we were to pay and get these results here, this article seems to say that more people are responding to those kinds of ads instead of those text ads that we've seen for the past 20 years. Those, we're getting numb to those, or we're ignoring those actively. So these sort of graphical ads about a product, people seem to respond to that. Yeah, I need to buy something. I'm online. I need. Uh, this is what I need. This is the ad. It's what I need. I'm going to click. And again, you may never click on an ad. You may actively avoid ads. You may have seven ad blockers turned on at, behind a proxy. Great. But a lot of other people don't. And they see a result. I actually do need this product. I will click. <clears throat> Let's see what else. There's a newsletter that might be useful to subscribe to to keep up to date, but you can just come here and um, check. Is responsive web design enough? Hint, no. A few years ago, it would have said yes. Now that's changing. And responsive web design is basically does your site respond and change? to the kind of device it's on. Does your site shrink and look good on a mobile device? Does it expand and look good on a tablet? Does it respond? Does it change uh, depending on the person's design uh, device? A few years ago, it would have been, yes, it's very important. Your website needs to be mobile friendly. Now, it's more about, is it enough? No, because Chris Jones explains why having a responsive site is the great first step, but combining AMP and PWA is better. I don't even know what those acronyms mean. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to read these articles, read these definitions, and be ahead of my competition. My competition that barely got on the train about, OK, my website needs to be mobile friendly. Well, now you're going to be ahead of them because you also want to set up AMP and you want to set up PWA. And yes, some of these things are very technical and complicated. But they have to be because uh, to penalize the spammers and to penalize the websites that are just barely trying and to promote us that are trying and want to stand out from the competition. A majority of Google searches occur on a smartphone. 50% of local mobile searches are for local business contacts, contact information. Well, that makes sense. I'm on my phone. I'm driving around. I need to find the address, the contact information. I need to call them. I'm going to search on my phone for a location nearby, and I need their phone number. Oh, my phone number is not even on my website. My contact information is not easy to find on my website. Again, this is a great blog. It's not officially from the search engines, but they do their research. And they, um, they um, give you the latest advice. Okay, so that's one of the cert that's one of the websites I'll mention as um, as we go on. Yes. Yes, you're paying for these terms. In Google AdWords, that's your pay per click. Can you explain that? We'll get to 
Um, not quite. Like I said, uh, we won't do a, a lot of the paid stuff, but basically in you can read an article like here, and uh, AdWords is their whole system where you're paying to try to get placement when people search. Basically, you buy keywords so that you can appear higher than the competition. When I searched web design, Wix had paid some amount of money to be higher than the second highest one there. So in their AdWords system is where I'm paying for that and setting it up uh, to rank higher than the competition. Okay, so what I was reading in that book that you recommended, it kind of relates to this where he talks about competitor analysis where you're looking for keywords and phrases. Yes. So that's, what, that's kind of what you're just paying so you don't have to do that work. <coughs> I uh, in in the clients in the clients that we handle we don't do very much of AdWords so I, some on some of these answers I can't give you completely so I'm not so sure if they do it for you I don't think they do it for you but it's their system for you to help determine what are the keywords that are going to help you rank better according to the against the competition yeah and we will be covering all of that what's keywords long tail keywords generating them and all of that we will cover that it's just that we won't cover really the AdWords and the whole pay system so we'll do one more thing regarding search engines if you still have your search engine open up here uh, we'll, we'll do one more kind of search on both the search engines. I search for very generic web design. Okay, well now is the part where we where we have to think in terms about uh, simple keywords. So nowadays, okay, we'll say old days, simple keywords, search query. Nowadays, or New days or nowadays, uh, long tail keywords. The old days, I needed to find a web designer. So I would search for a web designer. And in the keyword, it's, it doesn't have to be one, one word, a phrase like that, 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 that applies. Nowadays, well, I, like I said, there's lots of web designers all over the place, so I need to be more specific. What would be what would be better to be a little bit more specific instead of searching web designer? Web designer for bakery. Web designer for bakery. Perfect. Well, I have a business. I'm a bakery. I need someone to make me a website that knows a little bit about bakeries, or e-commerce or you know some other keyword that is a little bit more detailed for my needs so I may get a search result and get a lot of great results from New York well I'd like to have someone local that I can yell at when it goes wrong so web designer for e-commerce in San Diego and yes, even though the search engines do kind of know generally a little bit about your location and such, what I'm getting at here is notice the one search at the top based compared to this newer search. The old way to search, when the web was younger and there were less websites and Yahoo ruled the earth, you could find what you were looking for searching that way. But now with the explosion of websites and content out there, we need to be more specific. The new way is this long tail keyword strategy, being more detailed on what you want. So try to do the search engine, try to do the search now with um, maybe a little more detail. Maybe you don't know the exact detail just yet, but that's one of the things we'll learn about in the class. But now try to do a search for your business a little bit more detailed. How would people search for you? I'm a bakery, so let's say people are going to search for, um, you know, bakery in mission. Mission Viejo. Uh, what about organic bakery in Mission Viejo? Or, um, you know, kid friendly bakery in Chula Vista. You know, just being a little bit more specific 
about trying to be search exactly what I'm looking for. Um, more more text, more more detail, and we'll learn more about about this. I'm getting kid kid friendly restaurants, fun places for kids. Uh, Chula Vista restaurant and bakery, merry calendars, five kid friendly Chula Vista hotspots. Well, the, my business is not appearing. Okay, let me try a different way, different keywords, different ideas. This is part of the challenge of this modern SEO to figure out what are the keywords people are searching for. We'll have an activity on that. But this is now what's, what's, what's relevant today. Uh, the uh, long tail keywords. Among many other tactics, long tail keywords important nowadays for people to find your site. Natural language queries are ascendant, are more and more important. And that sounds like a very fancy, uh, that sounds like a very fancy thing. Natural language queries. Well, let me demonstrate that right now. What's a good taco shop nearby? <coughs> 0 0.8 miles. It said, here are the taco shops I found within 0 0.8 miles. So I asked my phone in a natural language query. I didn't type it in like a, like a stilted mechanical way. I just asked it. And it knew location, because these things know our location. And I asked it what I wanted, and it gave me a map. It's giving me a map here. And it's telling me five stars rated here, and four stars on this one, and bad reviews on that one. This is becoming much more common. Asking your device in a natural language, uh, with a natural language query, and getting results. The top result that I, hear is La, uh, that I see here is La Fuente Mexican food. It's on Aero Drive. Then we have Palomino's Mexican and Seafood. It's on Convoy. Lupe's Mexican Eatery. OK, I get three results. One of them has four and a half stars. One of them has four stars. One of them has four and a half stars. So I'm getting some results and then a bunch of other results. Some of them are paid, but I'm getting a variety of results because of natural language search. Have you noticed also uh, Google search homepage here? Little microphone. What's a good taco shop nearby? Listings for nearby taco shop around San Diego. Right. Here they are. Didn't allow the location, so it's not fully finding me. It's down in Mission Valley. But here we got Roberto's Taco Shop, Lucha Libre, Sombrero. So, you know, I natural language. I. Uh, I'm asking it like a person, and I get some results because of the keywords, taco shop, nearby, good. And so here's ones that are rated well. And again, you may look at this and say, well, this guy, this is paid. They're paying to be on the map. OK, maybe. Let's discount that. If we scroll down, what other results? SanDiego.eater.com, where to eat tacos in San Diego. San Diego restaurants, Hunter.com, San Diego's best 30 tacos. Yelp, best tacos in San Diego. Uh, TripAdvisor, 10 best Mexican restaurants. Nowadays, we also have many directories where we could appear in. Review sites. Testimonial sites, blogs, aggregators, they collect things. Well, that's all part of SEM. That's what you're doing outside your site. I need to get on that review site. I need to get ranked on that aggregator. I need to get people to write about me. 
So not only do I need to do things on my own website, I need to do things outside of my website. So there's a lot to SEO nowadays, isn't there? And that's what we'll be covering in the class. Yes? Uh, on the aggregators, is that uh, where you would pay, pay them? Do you have or is that an affiliate? All of these are both of those, that they're free or paid. Uh, you can pay for people to write about you. Right. You can pay to get on these review sites and pay for reviews. Uh, but we'll be usually covering the free aspects of all of these because, again, uh, I'm paying to get great reviews or, or results on these sites, so then I stop paying, and then I'm not number one anymore. But it might have been enough for me to get my foot in the door, word of mouth. Let's take our second break for us to think about this. After we come back, we'll have a handout where we'll have um, where, we'll, where, we'll, where we will start to look at uh, well, how do I start to develop my long tail keyword? How do I set up what people are searching for? How do I figure that out? We'll have a handout that helps us with that right after the break. It's 11:55, so we'll take a break until 12:05, and then we'll go on.